Hi everyone and welcome back to another FreeCAD video. This time in FreeCAD we're tackling a Patreon's question and this is from Dave and he's creating a hydroponic system and wants to know how to do some pipe work. And that's connecting two pipes together but having that continuous hole that's going through all of them and this can be a common problem and I'm going to show you a few ways of achieving this. So let's have a look how we tackle this in FreeCAD. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So I've just started a new document in the part design in FreeCAD. Now when starting pipe work in the part design, it's quite easy to create hollow pipes at first and then finding when you start connecting the pipes that you have voids in there, which you have additional operations on top of to hollow out. With this method, you still have to do the hollow in, but there's a bit more structure to the approach. I'm just using a simple demonstration with a profile on the XY plane. And I'm just going to use a simple pad for this. Let's go around about, I'm not sure the size is, so we'll just keep it very simple. Let's go 150. We create that and then we go, well, what do we want to do with a pipe coming out this way? Especially in the part design, because in the part we have something called nice little utility. And where is it? It's this one here, which is extremely useful. It's connect objects, embed objects, and cut out. And this allows you to do pipe work quite easily because it will remove parts of the pipe automatically. But when we're in the part design, we don't have that luxury unless we use it as a base feature. So we design our pipe and then pull it in from the embed as a base feature for the part design process. But this is what normally happens. We start off with a pipe and then we decide to create another pipe and that's create a pipe across this way. And I'm just going to add some structure in here along the XZ plane. So what I'm doing, section through that is creating a simple line. And this is going to determine the angle of my pipe. The reason why I've created this line is that I can actually change the angle of the line and the pad will follow. So it makes our design a bit more flexible. And we'll create another sketch. Let's create one along the same plane as where that's pointing. So the YZ plane and use a section view. And well, let's create the pipe that we want. So I'm creating it down here because I'm going to use attachment. So what we've got is we've got the pad and the sketch and we'll take that last sketch I zoom in about and look at the map mode, flat face, use that. It's on plane YZ at the moment. So we change that and place it upon that vertex. And then we need a reference to, because at the moment, I know it is translate origin. So that's the origin point of the sketch that's been translated to that vertex. It's not in line with this line. So I've selected the second reference. I'm going to place it upon this line and then change it to normal to edge. This lines up nicely then. So we've done that, then we could pad that. So we take that sketch and create a pad. Now what direction is this going in? If it's normal, it's going this way. So I'm going to use the page up and increase this until we hit the pipe. So this is the normal process. And then we end up looking inside and seeing, well, we've got part of the pipe in there. And then what normally people do is go in and create a sketch upon here and start pocketing all the way through. That is one way of doing it. Another way, what we can do, and let's get rid of that pad and start more or less from the beginning, is that instead of creating a walled cylinder here, which is sketch, this sketch here, I'm going to take out the center and delete that. Let's close up. Then we pad that sketch. 
It was about 150 before. And we do the same with the other one. So we're creating solids. So we create our solid first, then we take that sketch and pad that. Let's use the page up. Well, that was a page down, page up, and you see these millimeters increasing in tens. So we've got a solid now. So at this point, it may be worth trying a thickness. So we have the pipes, select one face, the top face, control select the other top face, and apply the thickness. And we can get a thickness through there. And this depends on how complex your pipes are and the continuity of those surfaces. You can often get away with this. If this fails, then we can go back to the original process. So we have the pipes, and then we can add our profile on top of here. So we first pocket through this one. So we can use a pocket in there, go through all, and then we can do it from this side as well. So another sketch upon there, another circle, place a circle in here. Let's import that, use the import, pull that in, bring those two together, make those quinston together, and then use the pocket. And we can pocket down. I'm just going to use the page up. We have to be aware though, when we look inside, that we see it come through the other side. So we can look inside here, and page up and we'll see it appear inside. That's gone all the way through into the base. So that's one way of doing it. And it's all to do with the order of creation. All things in FreeCAD, you'll find that there's a number of ways of doing the same thing. If these were additive pipes and subtractive pipes, then this would be the same way. So if we're using pipes instead, rather than pads, we would basically use the same workflow. So from here, we create our profile, making sure that it's not walled. So just a solid profile. Then we'll create our path using another sketch. Let's say the path took something like this path that curves up and out. Now, one thing what we must remember is that we've created this profile upon this plane. So we come in here, the planes here, let's click on the origin, press the space bar. You can see the planes within. We've created it upon this plane here. This plane is not normal to this path. We've created the profile upon the plane and then just sketched this path along the X, Z plane. But if we look at the path, we can see, I zoom right in, it curves out this way. So this profile has got to be adjusted so it's normal to this, so it's in line with this path. We've just placed it upon the X, Y plane. Let's hide the origin. So in that case, we've got the profile here, we need to make some minor adjustments if we want this to follow this path correctly. You may not want to, you may want to place this path tangent. Use the tangent seat, there we go. To here, and therefore this will follow this correctly. If not, let's control Z that to bring it back we would need to take the profile, this one here, and then adjust the map mode. Plane at the moment, X, Y plane. We'll change that and use the vertex. And then the second reference, reference two, is that path. This will go shooting off into somewhere into the distance. Of course, we're concentric, we need normal to edge. And that's okay that now. So now if we look at the front, we can see 
that this is in line with this path now. So now we can do our path. Let's make sure that this path is out here somewhere. And the good thing, because we're normal to this path, if I hit close, this will adjust as well. So we can take the profile, then control select the path, and then create our additive pipe. Bring that all the way up to the top. We can add additional profiles in there if we wanted to, to change the taper of this pipe or have it bulging in the middle. Totally up to you, a multiple profile pipe operation. But then the next stage is to create a pipe coming out from say out of here. Exactly the same operations. Let's create our path. So we're going to create the path along this plane, the XZ. Use the view section. Let's use another arc. Let's say we want it to come out about here and outwards. And you notice the arc goes into the body. So we're looking to create an additive pipe that connects up. So going into this volume, merges the two volumes together. Also, we'll use that path to punch through another profile into this body once we've hollowed out this one. So it's got to go into the main volume. Let's close that. And again, let's add a profile from the YZ plane and create our circle. Now I nearly attached it, try to attach it to that point here. I'm attaching it to this one. So let's use the section view and create the circle and close that. So then we can take that sketch change the map mode once again using the vertex and then the next reference making sure it's normal to edge okay that take the profile control select the path use the additive straight in okay and then we can either sketch upon this face or reuse the profile. So we have the profile in here somewhere. I'll work my way up. Let's click on this additive pipe, pressing the space bar. It takes me back into history. If I look inside here, let's press the space bar on the additive pipe again and show one of the sketches. We can see that profile there. I could reuse that profile by making a copy of the sketch. Duplicate selected object. We don't need all we just want the sketch itself this one and we've got the auto select depending objects let's turn that off there we go and okay that the sketch sits inside the body we can see that but the map mode is correct so normal to edge we can see vertex 2 and edge 1. let's duplicate the sketch and also the references of where it's mapped, mapped reverse, etc. Now I can edit that sketch and adjust it to what I want. And then do the same. But this time, just going to leave these hidden and take that one and control select the path and use the subtractive pipe. They all become visible and we're going to see that's gone all the way through there. That's hit OK. And we just repeat now for this side. So we're looking for the profile of the second additive pipe. So this sketch here, if I press the space bar on it, you can see the profile on the outside. Again, edit and duplicate selected object. Make sure the auto select dependent object is off. We don't need all. And we need sketch free, the one that's in bold. That's OK that. Make sure that's inside that body, which it is. And all the references are there. Let's hide the body. You can see all the paths. And double click that sketch. Just bring this in. Obviously, you would add dimensions to this. When selecting and you have multiple edges on the profile, make sure you select the whole profile rather than just the edge. If we select once on an edge, 
it's not going to select the whole profile. We have to select again. Therefore, it selects up the tree to the sketch. This is important because you could end up piping an edge rather than a profile. If in doubt, we can do it one at a time. So select it from the tree as we hover over them. We can see them highlighted on the right hand side. And then use it's attractive. That's gone all the way through and should have come out the other side, which it looks like it has, which is good. And you can see the reason why we come in with this path into the object and then hit OK. So there we have our two pipes that are connected together. And we come in and just hide the paths by clicking on them and pressing the spacebar. So I hope that's helped with getting the two pipes connected together. There are a number of ways of doing this, but this is one of the most common ways of dealing with this scenario. Thanks a lot for that and look forward to seeing you in the new video. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.